Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the eighth video in the Xcode SwiftUI workshop, and the first video where we're building a new application. It's a location finder application where you can select a country and enter a postal or zip code to find the location in that country based on that postal code and plot it on a map. I love getting your feedback, so tap the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the video and ring that bell to get notifications of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. So let's start building this app by creating a new iOS app and provide the name Location Finder. As before, we make sure that the interface is SwiftUI and the language is Swift. So as we did in the previous video, Let's rename Content View to better reflect what the view represents. Our application is only going to have this single view, but I'm still going to rename it, and I'm going to call it Location Finder View. Update that preview provider struct as well. An API stands for an Application Programming Interface, and it's a set of tools and protocols which allows two different software programs to communicate with each other and, in simple terms, it's a way for different software components to talk to each other and share data. An example of an API is the Mastodon API, where it allows developers to access Mastodon data, such as posts or toots or profiles and trends, and use it in their own applications. They can use the API to create apps that show a user's posts or search for posts related to certain topics. Many APIs require that you have an API key to access the data. And this means that your access key can be revoked, as it was recently for Twitter client applications, which then prevented the applications from working at all. It's more common now to find that if you want to build an application to present information from a source on the internet, that source provides an API. This includes APIs for weather, stock market, and literally anything that you can think of. Some are free and some have limitations as to how often you can make calls to retrieve data from them. If you want to get your hands dirty and craft your own application, I suggest that you visit the Epiphany website. and It has a list of 90 of the top APIs in different categories. Some require keys, but they also list 15 that do not. And we're going to be using one of them. And it's this one here, it's the Zippopotam API. And it's a project for finding locations based on postal codes or zip codes. It's a free API, and the response you get is in the form of JSON, which we saw in our previous tutorial. And they have over 60 countries supported, and it's an open source project. Using the API is pretty simple, and you can test this in the browser right from your URL. You start with the base URL, which is this one here. And then you add a path that will represent the country code for which you are searching. For example, I can use CA for Canada. And then we add a path that will represent the full or part of the postal or zip code that is specified in the range for that country. And that's shown in the country chart on the site. So for me, that will be V5N. Then the final URL then is something that looks like this. If I enter, if I hit enter on the web browser, then I'll go to that URL and the response we get back is this JSON. Now, if you recall from the previous application, JSON is made up of key value pairs where the keys will represent the names of our properties that we'll define for our model. And the values will be the values used in a particular instance of that object. So let's start by creating a model that can reflect this response. It's a little more tricky than the previous one in that it appears we have four properties, but one of them is an array of other objects. So I'm going to copy this JSON to our clipboard so that I have it available to me, and we'll come back to this site later to look at the countries that it supports. So in Xcode, create that file and call it location. You can paste that copied code into the top and then surround the code with a forward slash asterisk at the top, and then asterisk forward slash at the bottom. And this will create an entire comment block. So create a new struct and call it location. 
and make sure that it conforms to the codable protocol. What we want to do is to pick out the keys that we want to use for our application and create properties in our location struct. Now there's no need for us to use the return postal code as we'll be typing that in. We already know that. And there's no rule that states that you have to use every key value pair that an API has to offer. We'll be able to use the country though, so we'll specify that as a string property. Similarly, we won't use the country abbreviation as we have had that already when we made our submission. The next property though is an array of objects. So we'll need to create another struct that will represent that array of objects so that we can create an embedded struct. So we'll call it place for that object. This struct has key value pairs that I'm going to use in my application. But there's a problem with place space name, however, as the property, because in Swift, a property must not contain spaces. So I can replace this using a camel case and name the property place name, lowercase p, uppercase n, and this will be of type string. I will also need the other remaining properties, except for the state abbreviation. But all of them are string, so I'll create a property for longitude, state, and latitude. Now that we have this struct inside our location struct, we can use it and create a places property in our location struct itself that will be an array of those place objects. But we'll still need to resolve the issue of our renaming that place space name to place name camel case. And we'll do that by creating a coding key enum inside the place struct that conforms to both the string and coding key protocols. Here you'll need to create a case that represents all of your properties, but only assign a specific string value for those properties that have been changed. For example, place name will have to equal place space name in quotes. And that'll make the conversion take place. Well, we can now start to design our user interface in location finder view. I'm going to remove the image view and its modifiers from the V stack. I'll remove the padding, and then I'm going to embed that V stack in a navigation stack. And then as we've done in the past, I'm going to add a navigation title to the V stack, and I'm going to provide it the string location finder. Well, as the first item in the V stack, we want to create a picker. And this will list all of the countries available. If we return to the Zippopotam website, we can see all of those countries in this table. And I want to take three of those columns and use them to provide our users with the information for a picker on our view. And I want to create a JSON object that we can store in our application and load at runtime. I've made this easier for you and I provided you with another JSON file for that structure. But if you're interested to see how I created that JSON file, you can just stick with me for a minute. What I did to create that file that I called countries.json was to copy that table from the website onto my clipboard. And then I opened a numbers document and pasted it in there below the first title row. And that way it fills the cells nicely. I can remove that title row now and I can remove all the columns that I don't want, leaving me only with the three that I do want, namely the country, the code, and the range. And I'll remove all the other empty columns as well. Next, I can choose to export this as a CSV file, and I'm going to save it to my desktop. And then I use this website called the convertcsv.com where it converts CSV files to JSON if I want. And I use that to convert the file to JSON. So I can select that file, and once chosen, you can see the JSON inside the text view where I can copy it. And what I did next then was simply create a new file in Xcode 
and I called it countries.json and pasted that code in. And that's the file that's been made available to you from the downloadable Location Finder Assets folder. So open Xcode itself and then drag the country's JSON file from the downloaded assets folder and drop it right in the navigation pane of your application. Anything that's stored in this location is accessible to your app and it's known as the apps bundle. And while we're here, let's open the assets folder on Xcode. And I'll notice right now that our app has no icon and we'll also need an image for our main screen when our app loads before we choose a country. So I can drag that larger 1024 by 1024 image that I want to use for the app icon onto the placeholder for the app icon. And then as before, I'm going to drag the smaller image, the locationfinder.png, right into the assets folder and it'll create a new named asset for me for that image. Well, now that we have our JSON, we'll need to create a model into which we can populate our array of countries. And that model will correspond to the JSON in the country's JSON file. Well, this is pretty straightforward this time. Our model will have three properties, name, code, and range, and all are a string type. So we'll create a new Swift file and we'll call it country. Inside here, I'll create a new struct with the same name, but I'll make sure that it conforms to both the codable and hashable protocols. The codable conformance is so that we can load from a JSON file and hashable because I want to use this array that I'm creating in a picker selection. So then we'll create those three properties all as strings. Well, this will now allow us to decode JSON and populate an array of country. Well, there's one more instance that I want in my array, however, and that's a static country instance that I'm going to call none. And we can use that as the first element of an array so that when we present our picker, the selection will default to the first one, which I'm going to say is select country. And then I'll provide a code of XX that I'll never use. And for the range, I can use an empty string. And since the property is a static one for the struct country, we can reference it as country.none. In the last tutorial, we created a data store class that we use to manage our data and functions related to the data. In this tutorial, we're going to create a similar class, but this time we're going to call it location service because it's providing a service. So create a new Swift file and call it location service. Inside that file, create a new class using the same name and make sure it conforms to the observable object protocol so that we can create published properties within here that can be observed by other views and update the state of our UI or application as needed. So we'll create a published variable for countries that will be an array of country and I'll initialize it as an empty array. So inside this class, let's create a new function called load countries. And it's in here that we'll load and decode the JSON file in our bundle and assign that decoded array to our published property. We must first ensure that the file exists in our application bundle. If it's not there, there's no point in proceeding. So we'll use a guard check here to unwrap the URL. So to fetch that URL, we use the bundle dot main URL for the resource, which is the file name countries with the extension JSON. If we can't find that file in the bundle, we'll create a fatal error because there's no point in proceeding any further from here. Now that we have ensured that the file exists, we can try to get the data from the contents of that URL. If it fails, there's no point in proceeding. So again, we're going to use another guard check. So we'll guard let data equal to try question mark data 
from the contents of that URL, else we'll create that fatal error that specifies it's failed to load the country's JSON from the bundle. Next, we can use a JSON decoder class's decode method to try and decode from that data our array of country. Well, this may fail, so we'll have to enclose it in a do catch block. And if it does fail again, no point in proceeding. We'll have to catch that error and produce a fatal error. So countries will be equal to try JSON decoder decode the array of country.self from data. And then we can insert at the very first location our static country.none. So we can use the countries.insert and then specify country.none at position zero, which is going to place it at the very beginning of our array. If that try failed, then we'll produce another fatal error. With our load countries function now completed and our countries array populated by that function, we can initiate a call to this function when our class is instantiated. So we'll create an initializer and within the initializer, call load countries. And let me fix this typo here. Well, in the previous tutorial, we injected our observable object class into the environment at the entry point because we wanted to use that data in multiple SwiftUI views. We only have a single SwiftUI view in this app, so we don't need to do that here. We can create our instance of the location service class right inside the location finder view struct. And to do this, we'll create it again as a state object. Remember, once it gets initialized, those countries are loaded. And we can now use this array to create a picker. But we'll need a state property to bind our selection to so that we can use it when we make the request to the API. So we'll create a private state property called selected country and we'll set the initial value to that static country.none. Then I can replace the text view with a picker using the title key selection label constructor. And then for the title key, we'll use the string select country. For the selection, we'll bind it to selected country. And then for the content, the trailing closure, we can use a for each loop to loop over our location service countries array. And this will provide us with an iterator variable that we can call country, that we can use in creating our picker selection views. And then we can use the country.name as the string for a text view. But since we're only displaying the country's name, we must provide a tag for that selection to indicate that we want to use the entire country iterator to bind to our selected country. There's an issue, however, because the array that we loop through needs to be an identifiable collection. But we've not specified that our country object conforms to the identifiable protocol and provided it with an ID property. However, we can bypass that conformance so long as we can specify an ID key path that'll reference one of our properties that we know will be unique. And in our case, that's going to be the code property. So that's what we'll use for our ID key path. Let's add a button style of bordered to make the picker stand out more. And then add a spacer to push the picker up to the top of the V stack. Now when our application loads, the array of countries has loaded and we have a picker that'll allow us to select a country. And that country object has a range that we'll be able to display to help our users understand what the postal code should look like. And that country code that we can then use to submit to the API. And that's what we're going to be doing in the next video. We'll perform that request to decode the response from the API.